Hello everyone, this is Colin from Fiber Optics for Sale. In this video, I will explain what is structured cabling standard, so let's get started. Before the 1990s, data and voice cabling systems were proprietary, which means they were vendor specific. Each vendor had its own cabling system design, and it was hard to have products from different vendors to work together. This no standard approach had many problems as shown in the list. In the mid 1980s, the EIA was asked to develop a specification that would encourage structured, standardized cabling. In 1991, the TIA published the first version of the Commercial Building Telecommunications Cabling Standard, better known as TIA EIA 568. So who are responsible for making these standard specifications? A number of organizations are devoted to the development of specifications that encourage interoperability. As long as the manufacturer follows specifications, their devices should be able to work with other networking devices without any problem. In the United States, there are the American National Standard Institute, or ANSI, the Electronic Industry Alliance, or EIA, and the Telecommunication Industry Association, or TIA. The International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, is responsible for international standards around the world. In the United States, we follow TIA 568C as the structured cabling standard. This standard covers the following topics, such as subsystems of structured cabling, cable installation methods and practices, connector and pin assignments, and more. The TIA 568C is actually composed of four documents. The C.0 defines the generic telecommunications cabling for customer premises. The C.1 defines the commercial building telecommunications cabling standard. The C.2 defines balanced twisted pair telecommunications cabling and components standard. And finally, the C.3 defines optical fiber cabling components standard. The TIA 568C breaks structured cabling systems into six areas. One is the horizontal cabling, two is the backbone cabling, three is the work area, four is the telecommunication rooms and enclosures, five is equipment rooms, and six is entrance facility or building entrance. I will briefly introduce each area in the following slides. Horizontal cabling is the cabling that extends from horizontal cross-connect or main cross-connect to the work area and terminates in telecommunications outlets. Horizontal cabling includes the following, such as cable from the patch panel to the work area, telecommunications outlets, cable terminations, cross-connections, and cross-connects in telecommunication rooms or enclosures. This figure shows a typical horizontal cabling infrastructure in a star topology from a telecommunications room. The horizontal cabling is typically connected into patch panels and switches hubs in telecommunications rooms. Backbone cabling is also called vertical cabling, cross-connect cabling, etc. Backbone cabling is necessary to connect entrance facilities, equipment rooms, and telecommunications rooms and enclosures. This figure shows backbone cabling that connects an equipment room with telecommunications rooms. Backbone cabling consists of not only the cables that connect the telecommunication rooms, equipment rooms, and building entrances, but also the cross-connect cables, mechanical terminations, or patch cores used for backbone-to-backbone -backbone cross connections. The work area is where the horizontal cable terminates as wall outlet, also called the telecommunications outlet. In the work area, the users and the telecommunications equipment connect to the structured cabling infrastructure. The work area begins as a telecommunications area and includes components such as patch cables, modular cores, fiber jumpers, station equipment such as computers, telephones, fax machines, etc. The telecommunications rooms and telecommunications enclosures are the location within the building where cabling components such as cross connects and patch panels are located. These rooms or enclosures are where the horizontal structured cabling start from. The telecommunications room or enclosure may also contain networking equipment such as hubs, switches, routers, etc. This figure shows the relationship of telecommunications rooms to the backbone cabling and equipment rooms. The equipment room is a centralized space specified to house more sophisticated equipment than the entrance facility or the telecommunications rooms. Most often, telephone equipment or data networking equipment such as routers, switches, and hubs are located here. Backbone cabling is specified to terminate in the equipment room. 
This figure shows the equipment room. The entrance facility specifies a point in the building where cabling connects with the outside world. All external cabling, such as campus backbone, inter-building, and a telecommunications provider, should enter the building and terminate in a single point. TIA 569B recommends a dedicated entrance facility for buildings with more than 20,000 usable square feet. So there you have it. Please leave your comment below if you'd like to see other topics. Don't forget to visit foforsale.com for more free fiber optic tutorials. I will see you in the next video.